The subject of this chapter is finding areas under curves on closed intervals. So if we've got an interval and we've got a function on that interval, we are looking for this area. For now, we'll assume that the function is greater than or equal to zero. And we'll try to give some motivation of this, first of all, because compared to the stuff we've been doing, it's quite abstract. I mean, derivatives are rates of change. It's not hard to imagine why you'd want to know how fast something is changing. Something like this, by contrast, comes across more as a problem of pure geometry. Who cares? Well, suppose that f of t is the speed of a falling object. Say, for example, that you would drop an object off a ledge without um, throwing it downwards or upwards, that its speed after t seconds is 9.8 t meters per second. Let's ask a question. If takes the object two seconds to hit the ground. How High up was the object dropped from? How could we answer a question like this? It probably seems, and you are correct if you think this, that this is some kind of antiderivative problem because velocity and speed are closely related, and we want to take information about speed and get information about position. However, let's look at an alternative graphical way of approaching this. 
we know that distance equals rate times time, but we also know that only works if the rate is constant. The rate isn't constant, it's changing all the time. Be that as it may, let's try to use this formula. Let's look at a tiny little interval and let's ask the question, how far does the object fall in this interval alone? And the key idea here is this. What if we just pretended the object was moving at a constant speed over the course of this interval? Like what if we assumed the object was moving at that rate? Well, our answer won't be quite correct if we make that assumption, because it's not a true assumption. But if the interval we're looking at is small enough, it's very close to being true. I mean, for example, if you look at an interval that's one ten thousandth of a second long, the object is barely accelerating on such a small interval. And because it's barely accelerating, it's basically a constant. So if the interval we select is small enough, we should be able to get away with this and still get a pretty good approximation of the actual answer. If we treated this rate as constant, the distance it falls is the rate times the time, and the rate times the time is the area of this rectangle. So the distance traveled on this interval is very close to the area under th this rectangle, which is very close to the area under the curve on this interval. That suggests the following true statement. that the distance an object travels is the area under the speed curve. The area under this curve from zero to two, we can find um, this is a triangle. The area is one half the base times the height. The base is two. The height is 19. 19.6, stick two in here, we get that. 
So the area is one half two times 19.6. And the object was 19.6 meters above the ground. What if we have a more complicated speed function though? For example, realistically, if the object is falling 19.6 meters, that's a long way to fall. And it's probably not correct to neglect air resistance. That formula on the previous frame, that neglect air resistance. A more realistic speed curve is probably something like that. And now if we want the area under a curve, it's no longer a simple geometric problem. It has turned into a calculus problem. With this motivation under our belt, let's start to discuss how we might approximate the area under a curve. <laughs> 